Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, everything that I talk about, since this is a psychology YouTube channel, might contain triggering material, so watch with care. But let's watch. Ha! Yeah! I am super into everything Asian culture. I've been into cosplay for a long time, you know, getting all dressed up and embodying my characters. Today, I am a soul reaper, and I am here to reap your soul. If you had enough, Wah! So as a fellow nerd, I can relate to the obsession with certain characters and cosplay. Seattle has a pretty robust cosplay community. And uh, so, you know, <laughs> now, what do I say? As, as an Asian person and as a Japanese person, um, it's interesting how some white Americans become extremely obsessed with Asian culture. There's nothing wrong with it, of course, you know, if someone's into Italian movies or someone loves French food or Roman culture, you know, history or whatever. There's obviously nothing wrong with that. But sometimes people either exoticize Asians, Asian Americans, they will appropriate culture, they will hold up a, a version of Asian culture that they believe is true when it's not really true. Uh, on the scale of uh, transgressions and unfair behavior based on race, uh, you know, usually there it's not super horrible. But I don't know, maybe there'll be something in here that we can comment on. You're a worthy opponent. But my obsession with Asian culture is so much more than just cosplay. I love fantasy. Welcome to my purple kingdom. Okay, so she's saying she loves fantasy. I'm guessing she plays video games, and maybe she reads manga, maybe she watches a lot of anime, maybe she even plays Dungeons and Dragons, all these things I can relate to. <laughs> and so, you know, it's definitely nerdy, but it's becoming more accepted as time goes on. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But then we have to wonder about her uh, love or dating choices moving forward, but uh, anyway, there's nothing wrong with this. In fact, there's a lot I can relate to. The whole house outside is painted purple. My dragons, their little Easter eggs are kind of all over the house. And all my anime posters, I think the reason why I just always gravitated towards fantasy is because I wanted to escape my real life. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's why we have fantasy. That's why we have these worlds that we can enter or sports or politics sometimes there's uh, an escape uh, it provides us something else to think about sometimes we're doing it just for entertainment sometimes we're doing it out of desperation because we have a lot of sadness and pain that we're going through ourselves so it sounds like she was using it to escape from her life let's see if she can give us any details i hope they give us some details because it'll help I have struggled with being overweight since I was in kindergarten. Growing up, I never felt like I was different, but other people, damn it. Yeah, it's really awful, the amount of fat shaming that is in our society. And it's really ridiculous. There is, there's so much, it's so ingrained in our culture and it took me a while to deprogram my mind that I'd heard a lot of people who were compelling to me, but the, the one that really, really slapped me across the face and woke me up was Lindy West here in Seattle, a writer. Uh, she used to write for The Stranger. Now, I don't know what she is doing primarily right now, but she's written a fair amount of a few books that I've read. Uh, she was uh, the basis for the TV show Shrill. And I, th I think she's incredibly intelligent and a very convincing cultural commenter, commentator on fat phobia and fat shaming. You know, uh, what can I say? It, people are people and some people are different sizes. And why do we have a thing about that in our society? It's like, let, let it go. You know, let, let that person have their own journey, whatever that is. And even if the journey is like, hey, I like who I am. Like, what's it to other people? It does not harm you that other people 
have a different size than than you or whatever you know it's 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 such a ridiculous thing that we do i mean of all the things that we should be focusing on in our society right of all the things we should be shaming in our society why this other people made me feel different My classmates always made me feel unwanted. I hated going to school. Oh, it just breaks your heart. And of course, you know, I'm glad she found something to save her, which was her fantasy life. But the trauma and the bullying and the pain and the internalized fat shaming and fat phobia, the internalized ideas that you're worthless and invisible and disgusting and undateable, unlovable. In every aspect of life, not just in romance, but in friendships. Um, you're not worthy as a human being. You can't, you're not going to get hired. No one wants to talk to you. No one thinks you're interesting. Uh, no one wants to listen to you. No one wants to interact. I mean, it's like, oh, it just breaks my heart. And it's happening right now. You know, she's an adult. She's talking about the past which is, of course, is tragic. But right now, right now, there are kids in school being treated this way. For what? Why do we do this to people? Like, we're cruel. We're a cruel, cruel species of animal. Of course, he's got to be Asian. I think Japanese movies were really a big inspiration, like the samurai movies. I love just how they looked in their samurai outfits with their long, luscious hair, their eyes, their face, their skin tone. I love everything about them. I love how 90 Day Fiance has this cut scene that I'm I'm pretty sure they either just produce themselves or like, well, we can't really take a Akira Kurosawa clip because we'd have to pay for the rights to that. So we'll just hire some Asian looking guy and dress him up as a samurai and have this kind of grainy video of it. Okay, so she's saying that her ideal man is, you know, comes right out of a samurai movie and it's a Japanese guy samurai with a sword and the long luscious hair as she, as she says and okay so imagine just as a it's not the same but imagine if a man was saying this if a man was saying oh my i'm having i'm having a hard time dating women in my area so i want a, a i want to date a woman who's asian and the ideal woman is from an anime you know, from Attack on Titan, uh, what's her face? And she's my ideal. And so I went on an Asian dating site to try to find her. I think we'd say, ew. So I think we can still say that about this. Having said that, if two people love each other and they find each other, and what's the big deal, right? I mean, it's it's fine, especially given her circumstances that she is reporting that people you know, treat her poorly and dating is hard in her area. So, you know, find love where you can find it. I would just hope if I were her friend or her therapist, I'd just say like, so, you know, these are human beings, right? They're not characters in a movie. They're not, they're not a fantasy. These are real human beings. And there, you have to recognize that. And, and you, once you get into a relationship, that fantasy will, will wash away very quickly. And so are you sure that this is what you want? And can you really make sure that you treat this person like a fully fledged human being that doesn't necessarily fit with your fantasy? And the person is very unlikely to fit with your fantasy. Ella, it's Johnny. I hope you have a great day. Johnny and I have surprisingly a lot in common. I'm like this Western girl, you know, who has this Asian obsession. He's kind of like an Asian man who has a Western culture obsession. And we both love anime. All right. So they're both objectifying each other <laughs> based on ethnicity or region of the world that they're living in. So maybe maybe they're a match made in heaven in that way. Oh, that has been in my family for four generations. I spend most of my weekends there, and I'm hoping that one day Johnny and I can get married and take over the ranch together. Okay, are the horses ready? Yeah, horses are all done. Wait, is this another Julia situation? Does Johnny know what he's getting into? Ranch life is pretty specific. I don't know. Maybe 
he will be cool with it. Let's find out. I like this, but he likes that we have so much in common and he likes that I'm hardworking and stuff like that, you know? Okay. He's very supportive. Like even with the weight, he said, I will help and support you to lose weight. We've talked about healthier meals and he's gonna do the cooking. All right, so uh, I, ho I hope that's okay with her. You know, it's similar to Nicole and Azan situation. It's one thing, well, it ha always has to be established what she wants. If she's like, hey, I wanna lose weight, please help me with that, okay. Or in a negative situation, it would be Johnny saying, hey, you should work out more, you should lose weight, instead of loving her for who she is and what her path is. For some people, they're like, yeah, I'd like to lose weight. And for other people, they're like, no, I'm f I feel fine with who I am, you know? And you're just gonna have to love me for who I am. But it sounds like she wants to lose weight. Let's let's hear this. You know, I mean, it's he's Asian, so it's like freaking healthy. Just a lot of vegetables and stuff. I know you're not happy with how you look. I know that. I just want to make sure that he doesn't take advantage of that. So she keeps saying Asian, but uh, <laughs> so on demographic uh, surveys, they will say, you know, what are you? Are you, you know, Hispanic? Are you Asian? You used to be Oriental. Are you white? Are you black? And I just want to put this into context. When you say Asian, you're sometimes including, including South Asian in there uh, because there's no South Asian box. It's just Asian. So you're talking about Japan, Korea, all of China, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, <laughs> Guam, India, uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. Um, what am I leaving out? <laughs> I'm leaving something out. Uh, uh, Singapore. Uh, what am I leaving out? Uh, okay, so when you include that whole thing, you're literally talking about more than 50% of the world's population. You are talking about billions and billions of people, thousands and thousands of languages, I don't know how many languages, but many languages, many cultures. So to say, well, you know, Asian people, they eat their vegetables. It's like, what? You're talking, it's, it'd be the same as if someone in China were to be like, well, you know, everyone who doesn't live in Asia, they don't eat their vegetables. It'd be as if someone in China were to lump in people from Russia and Poland and Ireland and South Africa and Egypt and the United States and Peru. It's like if they just lumped every single person into this, in fact, that would make more sense because that's a smaller group of people. There's fewer people who live in non-Asian countries than live in Asian countries. So now, you know, we'll see how this plays out, but it's just a pet peeve of mine when, when people say you're Asian, it's like, that doesn't mean anything. That'd be like saying you're non-Asian. My race is non-Asian. Well, what does that mean? Are we talking, are we talking Egypt? Are we talking Libya? Are we talking, you know, Ethiopia? Are we talking Peru? Are we talking Canada? Are we talking, you know, and even within those countries, of course, there's a lot of different cultures and we understand that. And this, this goes the same for Asia. So it's just, it's just a pet peeve, but. The thing that Ella struggles with the most is her self-confidence. She doesn't like how she looks. And I think the men in her life take advantage of it. They take advantage of it financially. They take advantage of it emotionally. I don't know Johnny. I don't know whether I can trust him or not. All right, so the mom seems to be indicating that Ella has been exploited before and used and tricked before. Is that true? Is it just a story that they've interpreted? I don't know, maybe we'll find out. Whether I can trust him or not. And if he really is caring towards Ella. And I'm just afraid that Johnny wants a green card just to get here someday. And then once he gets here and he knows he cannot be deported, that he leaves her. Okay, so we hear this almost all, 99% of the time, the family members are saying things like this. On one hand, it's like, okay, yeah, that could happen. But it reeks of xenophobia and racism and panic about, they're stealing our gerbs. And do people understand? I, may, I always make that joke. Uh, stealing our is from South Park, you know? Do people watch that show? And I feel like that episode was decades ago. <laughs> it probably was. Anyway, so there's an element of that. 
Um, but you know, you're concerned about your daughter, so uh, there's some normalcy to that, of course, especially if it's happened before that she has been taken advantage of. It's not a fairy tale, and I know you want the fairy tale, but it's just it doesn't fairy look tales that way. don't exist. Exactly. And there's been a lot of American women that have been taken advantage of from men from out of the country. And I don't want to see you get your heart broken again. A lot of women who have been taken advantage of by men from out, I would guess, percentage-wise, the amount of women who have been abused and mistreated, there's a 99% were from American citizens. <laughs> so this idea of just like, you got to watch out for them foreigners, it's like, I don't know, you got to watch out for anyone. <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I, I would have to hear. You know, I, if I asked the mom and said, "Well, where's this coming from? Uh, why do you think this?" and I heard her say something like, "Well, you know, I'm just worried about my daughter, and I, I just don't know. I, I, I'd like to think that uh, he was, uh, you know, true and and loved my daughter. And I think that, and I've seen some things that indicate that. But I don't know. I just kind of worry." i would be okay. On the other hand, if I heard like, well, you know, them Chinese people and they're up to no good and they're, you know, I don't, I don't know what that's based on. I often never find out. Sometimes there, there will be additional information that will push me in one direction or the other. But I just want to comment on that. It's like, is it possible? Yes, that someone is just in it for the green card. Sure. Um, but it's not frequent on the show. I, I mean, we, I, I can never know that, but it doesn't seem like that's very, fr I'm trying to think of the couples that y'all have wanted me to watch. I'm trying to think of the ones, you know, that people believe, I think credible, you know, in a way that is convincing to me that it could have been true. Muhammad, it could have been true about him, but it might not have been. He, he could have legitimately been into her and some people believe that. And I, you know, I could see that. But if there was someone that I've watched where I was like, was he in it to win it from the beginning? Muhammad would have been the one that I th could have imagined it being true. Uh, Azan, Nicole and Azan, uh, also might have been, but you know, it's hard to know. Was he into her in the beginning and then th his love kind of diminished over the, because that the amount of time that they were together was I think five or six years or something. So did his love diminish over time? Did the inconvenience of long distance relationship really kind of sit in? That's hard to know. He kept kind of delaying the marriage and stuff and then he did take that money and said he was gonna have a shop but actually didn't start a shop. So there seemed to be some amount of exploitation there, who knows? But so Azan could have been someone that was just in it for the green card. I've heard people talk about is it George and, and Fisa? Um, I've, I haven't watched them, but I think some people think that and Fisa was just in it for the Greek, or at least just a, a gold digger, as people will call it. I'm trying to think of other people that were, anyway, point is, is that it's rare when, and even those rare cases, we're thinking, well, maybe they maybe they were in it, not only for the green card, but also in it for love, you know, or for like, you know, for maybe this will work out. Uh, but a lot of the couples on the show seem legit in love. I mean, I always think about Natalie and Mike when they first met. They seem legit in love. Uh, Brandon and Julia, these kinds of people, they just seem like, yeah, they're just in love. They're very much, and maybe a green card is a secondary part to that. But anyway. I've lived through quite a few of them. That's why it's real hard to trust that this is the real thing for you. Okay, so that's another thing that she, I've lived through quite a few of them. So that doesn't sound like one or two. That sounds like many men who have ex seemingly exploited her and not been, uh, you know, true. So, yikes, if that's happened, that's horrible if that did happen. And nice and the way that I feel right now is definitely something I've never felt before. I know that I made mistakes in the past, but I feel with this one, it's going to be different. It's going to be the one. So she, according to her, there are signs that Johnny is true and is real. So we have to respect that. On the other hand, they're, seem, they're seemingly talking about past traumas for her and you hear it in her voice, a desperation. And sometimes that desperation that that need for it to be true will eclipse us to seeing signs that maybe it's not real. But who knows? 
I, I hope the best for her, honestly. I, I hope that Johnny does love her. I, th I hope that this does work out. But I hope this is the one because I'm tired of trying. I know. <laughs> I support you and I will be here if it fails because I'm know. always here. I know, I love you. Don't cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> So it's great to see mom and daughter supportive of each other and in a good relationship. Brings a tear to my eye, the hug. It's all great. The mom saying, don't cry. Just people, just let people cry. It doesn't harm you. Just, you know, what's wrong with someone crying? It's totally appropriate for her to be crying. It's an emotional moment. She She's feeling the sadness of the past. She's crying for the potential joy of the future. Just, she's crying. It doesn't, just let people cry. Stop it. All right, well, if you want to participate in the conversation with other people who are watching these videos, or even with me, because sometimes I'll chime in in the comment section, you can comment below. You can go on Discord, you can go on Reddit, you can go on the Facebook fan page, you can go on the Instagram. All the links should be below. It's fun on Instagram in particular, um, and sometimes I'll, I'll also post stuff on YouTube, but. I think our main kind of sharing of our personal life, me and the pod wife, is on Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's snowing today and posted a picture of our dog uh, in the snow. So, but you know, it's not for everyone. <laughs> but if it's for you, check it out. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.